welcome everyone to the second lecture of psychrometry i decided to make a video on psychrometric processes different psychrometric processes because it is very very important but before that let's understand about a very simple topic but yet confusing that is relative humidity and specific humidity believe me if you don't understand these two topics in deep or in depth whatever you say then you won't be able to understand different psychrometric processes okay you have you will have lots of confusions so today let's understand what is relative humidity and what is specific humidity okay i can assure that at the end of the video you will not have any confusions regarding this topic so let's start with specific humidity okay suppose okay specific humidity is also defined as absolute humidity absolute humidity or it is also defined as moisture content moisture content okay suppose suppose this is a sample of moist air okay moist air we know that air is never present in its dry form it is always some amount of water vapor is present okay so we will take moist air suppose mv is the mass of water vapor mass of mass of water vapor and ma it is the mass of it is the mass of dry air it is the mass of dry air now relative humidity denoted by this symbol omega it is den denoted as mv by ma or the mass of water vapor to the mass of dry air present in a given sample of moist air okay now you can see it see relative specific humidity is defined as that how much moisture is present in the air it's as simple as that how much moisture is present in the air it is mv upon ma that means it is the mass of vapor water vapor to the it is the ratio of the mass of water vapor to the mass of dry air present in a given sample or a given mixture of moist air okay this is specific humidity see specific humidity is not dependent upon temperature and anything like that because specific humidity is very simple it it only tells us that how much moisture is present in the air at a given instant okay how much moisture is present in the air but let's understand relative humidity then you will understand that what is the difference between relative humidity and specific humidity okay first understand what is relative humidity now relative humidity it is nothing but it is a ratio it is a ratio it is a ratio of the amount of moisture present in air to the maximum amount of moisture that air can hold at that temperature this is very important at that temperature people define it as a pv by pvs or you can define it as by mv by mvs okay means what it is mv by mvs means what this how much all are at particular temperature at particular temperature this is very important at particular temperature that means how much moisture what is the mass of the water vapor present in the air in uh, current in uh, currently to the mac mvs means saturated mass of vapor at the saturated condition this is mass of 
वेपर वाटर वेपर एट सैचुरेटेड कंडीशन एट सैचुरेटेड कंडीशन मीन्स वेन द एयर इज कंप्लीटली फिल्ड विथ वाटर एयर कैन नॉट होल्ड एनी मोर वाटर एट दैट पर्टिकुलर टेम्परेचर ओके देन वी विल से दैट एयर इज नाउ सैचुरेटेड एयर इज नाउ सैचुरेटेड विथ वाटर सो इट इज टेलिंग दैट इट इज द रेशियो ऑफ मास ऑफ वेपर और द अमाउंट ऑफ वाटर वेपर प्रेजेंट टू द मैक्सिमम अमाउंट ऑफ वाटर वेपर दैट एयर कैन होल्ड एट दैट पर्टिकुलर टेम्परेचर वॉट एवर बी दैट टेम्परेचर थर्टी डिग्री सेल्सियस थर्टी टू डिग्री सेल्सियस बट एट दैट इंस्टेंट और एट दैट टेम्परेचर यू कैन ऑल्सो डिफाइन इट बाई पी वी बाई पी वी एस सी इफ एयर इज हैविंग सम अमाउंट ऑफ मॉइस्चर दे एंड द मॉइस्चर इज हैविंग सम मास देन ऑफकोर्स फ्रॉम आवर कॉमन सेंस वी कैन से दैट दैट मॉइस्चर इज गोइंग टू एक्सर्ट सम प्रेशर वेरी सिंपल ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड If the moisture is having some mass, then due to its mass, it is going to exert some pressure. That is nothing but vapor pressure. This is nothing but vapor pressure. See, in this video, you also understood about vapor pressure. This is PV or the vapor pressure of water, which is currently present to the maximum vapor pressure that air can. Withstand at that particular temperature. Okay. I'm now see. I'm explaining you its physical significance. This is the most important part of today's lecture. Try to understand. Suppose I'm taking different temperature values. Okay. First, let me take thirty degree Celsius. Then. Twenty-eight degree Celsius, twenty-six degree Celsius, and here thirty-two degree Celsius. Okay, let's make one chart, very rough chart. Okay, now see, you will understand the real physical importance of. relative humidity suppose at third I, and i told you i have forgot to tell you but you must know this that air can hold a particular amount of moisture at a particular temperature suppose at 30 degree celsius air cannot hold more air cannot hold more than 17 grams of water this is just an example at 32 if you increase its temperature then air can hold more amount of water vapor okay if its temperature increases then it can hold more amount of moisture this is the logic suppose at 32 degree celsius mvs mvs that means the mass of water vapor at saturated or the maximum amount of moisture that air can hold is suppose just for an example 17 grams per meter cube just an example that in 1 meter cube of volume it can hold 17 grams of moisture okay this much is the volume of the air and in that volume it can hold 17 grams of moisture remember this is the maximum this is the maximum that's why it is known as saturated and suppose the mass of vapor present or you can say that the amount of moisture present is amount of moisture present is something suppose 10 suppose 10 grams per meter cube 10 grams per meter cube then what is its relative humidity its relative humidity is mv by mvs that means 10 by 17 okay keep this value let me just check out this value 10 divided by 17 this 0.588 
or I can say it 58.8 percent okay now at 30 degree Celsius now at 30 degree Celsius your MV is 10 grams per meter cube your ma your moisture content is not going to change okay if you are decreasing the temperature then your moisture content is not going to same not going to change it will remain same where will that moisture go it will be in its own place okay so mass of vapor is same but at 30 degree celsius the maximum amount of moisture that air can hold that decreases okay so what will be mvs it will previously it was 17 now just consider it is 15 grams per meter cube then what is its relative humidity now 10 by 15 what is the value 10 it is 66.66 that means 66.67 percentage okay now let's check out for 28 degree celsius mv once again it is not going to change it will remain same 10 grams per meter cube okay because the moisture content is not going to change I'm t I've told you you are decreasing the temperature only but your MVS is changing that means the maximum amount of vapor that air can hold at this temperature is not 15 grams now it is less suppose it is 12 grams per meter cube just an example mind it so what is your relative humidity it is 10 divided by 12 what is the value 10 divided by 12 it is 83.33 percent it is 83.33 percent okay now when you are coming to 26 degree celsius the same thing is going to happen suppose mass of vapor once again 10 grams per meter cube it is not going to change I've told you moisture content will remain same MVS that is going to decrease suppose now it is 10 that means that means the maximum amount of moisture that air can hold is 10 grams per meter cube and what is the current situation it is 10 grams per meter cube so currently this is at the saturated condition this condition is at the saturated condition and the relative humidity is 100 percent in this case the relative humidity is 100 percent that means air is completely saturated with uh, air is completely saturated with moisture now the question is can relative humidity increase more than 100 percent can become more than 100 percent no it is never possible why never possible you have to understand that you must you must know the reason because once it is reaching the saturated zone at when you will decrease the temperature more suppose 24 degree celsius suppose 24 degree celsius it won't it mvs value will also become less and once it is less than this uh, present the amount of vapor that is present then the moisture that is present in the air will precipitate down okay once it precipitate down then relative humidity again decreases so there is no chance of be a relative humidity getting more than 100 percent okay and after this saturated laser region if you decrease the temperature even further then it will precipitate down either in the form of dew or fog or even if or if it is it may happen that it may sometimes uh, precipitate down in the form of rain also okay now one thing that i'm going to tell you that so you can understand the difference between relative humidity and specific humidity now check out the specific humidities in this case m what was specific humidity specific humidity was mass of vapor specific humidity or omega was mass of vapor divided by mass of dry air okay now this is very important to know that 
mass of dry air is constant it is not changing mass of dry air it is constant how can the mass of dry air present in a given sample of moist air change it is not going to change and we have seen that the mass of vapor is also constant because the moisture level is constant i have only decreased the temperature okay i have done only the cooling operation no dehumidification i have not in uh, changed humidity value because my moisture content is same so there is no point that humidity humidity or the moisture content will change specific humidity is not going to change so mass of air is constant and mass of vapor it is also constant in all these temperatures so omega or specific humidity omega or specific humidity it is also going to be constant that means when you are decreasing the temperature when you are decreasing the temperature or when you are cooling when you are cooling then relative humidity is increasing relative humidity was 50. can you see it yes relative humidity was 58.8 66 83 in this way relative humidity was increasing relative humidity was increasing going on increasing as you are cooling but specific humidity is constant okay so this was about the understanding part of the relative humidity and specific humidity now when i i will teach you psychrometric processes in my next lecture which is uh, next lecture then you will have no doubts believe me you will be able to understand okay and in that lecture only i will also teach you how to uh, see psychrometric charts thank you very much if you have any doubt please comment in the comment box and please subscribe to the channel okay thank you very much